Well, my S590 is extremely hard to start when it's cold. It was below 20 degrees last night, probably barely 20 degrees now. It usually has no problem starting when it's warm outside. So it, it, a, a no start or a hard start condition with a warm engine is completely different than a, uh, a hard start or no start with a cold engine engine so what we're going to do is we're going to inspect the uh the glow plug situation in this machine we're going to make sure the glow plugs uh the circuit is actually working send voltage to the glow plugs we're going to check the glow plugs make sure they're working and this machine has about 4,000 hours on it so we're still going to go ahead and do a compression test on this engine and and this is this is good information you know you don't have to have any special tools or anything i'll show you exactly what you need to do a compression test on this engine but we're going to check the health of uh, all four cylinders on this thing since we've got over 4,000 hours on it because a cold start could be either glow plugs of course which I, that's kind of what i expect on this engine or it could be low compression but we're going to find out which one it is I'm going to get this little top screen out of my way. Just a little more light in here and a little more room to work. But th this is the Doosan D24 2.4 liter engine that utilizes glow plugs. Okay, the 3.4, the D34 engine is a little different. It uses a grid heater that would be kind of in this area on the intake. It does not use glow plugs. So specifically talking about the D24 in this case. Right underneath the fuel lines here is our glow plug rail. I know it's hard to see because it's the same color as the engine and the sun's kind of bright, but um, you'll see the four glow plugs right back here. One, two, three, and four. It's a single wire that comes into this side of the rail, and then it just energizes the entire rail, which energizes all four glow plugs. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to put my meter on this stud here on the glow plug, and we're just going to turn the key on and make sure we got 12 volts coming into the uh, the glow plug circuit and that'll tell me if we got a bad fuse or a relay but on this machine even if we had a bad fuse or relay the um we, we, we would get a code on the dash the, in, the 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 machine would tell us if something was wrong but we're still going to manually check it with a uh, meter My key is on and it does say wait to start on the dash, which tells me that the um, it is energizing the glow plugs. And I can see I do have 12 volts on the glow plug rail. So that tells me the glow plug circuit is working correctly. Let's go ahead and pull the glow plugs out and check them. So using our 10 millimeter, we need to start with pulling the actual glow plug rail off the glow plugs themselves. Here's what our glow plug rail looks like. Now using my 5 16 or an 8 millimeter, I want to remove all four glow plugs. Definitely fuel on this glow plug. So with all four glow plugs removed, we're going to take them into the barn and test them individually. And I know what you're thinking. Come on, dude. What we do is we, we, we ohm test them in the engine. That's how you know if they're good or not. Well, yeah, uh, you know, after, uh, you know, 25 years of, of doing this, the, the ohm test is not the 100% guaranteed way to check glow plugs. Uh, you, you can get burned by doing that. But if we want to just check the ohms, these should ohm out around one ohm, very, very low resistance. Um, I'm just going to press, you know, put one lead here on the, uh, the threaded terminal or even if you got a smooth terminal and just um, one lead on the body itself. That's, that's where the ground would be. So this, this one is around 60 ohms, which is a lot higher than one ohm, of course. Uh, we'll check the next one. Kind of about the same, 75K ohm. Same thing, 60, yeah, 60K. 
last one. And that's that's less than an ohm. I, I'd be surprised this one probably should work. Um, but then what I do is I, I take a, just a good battery and uh, I got a little lead made up here to test my glow plugs. So I just put the positive in on one side of the glow plug and if you just touch the body to the battery, you know, you should get a spark. There, there's no spark or anything. No heat, no smoke, doesn't turn red. That tells me that glow plug is not working. Ah! <laughs> I got you good. No, no, no heat at all came through that uh, glow plug. So we'll check another one. See, no arc on the battery, so that tells me it's not pulling any current. That one's not good. Again, no, no sparks, no arcing. No good. Fourth one. Nothing. Engine. Now here's one out of a um, one of the Kubota engines, like a 2203 or something. And I'm, I'm going to show you how this test, you know, it does work. I just, again, put the positive lead there, push the body, and I could see sparks. And see, you can see it's smoking already. And these get up to around 14, 1500 degrees. You see the tip is starting to glow red. And this whole lower portion right here will just turn red. So that's how we would know if we got a good glow plug or not. So unfortunately, I've got four bad glow plugs. This is January 2022. Guess what's on back order? Like everything else, <laughs> the glow plugs. And there's not a good replacement for these. Um, these are very, very similar to what goes into our Mercedes Sprinter van. Uh, some of the Dodge Sprinters use these style, but they run on a four volt system. These glow plugs are on the uh, the 11 or the 12 volt uh, glow plug relay system. So it's, it's a different controller. Um, unfortunately, we can't just screw a four volt in. I, and I, I cannot find a replacement for these as of today. So we're gonna keep looking around, see if we can find a replacement. But um, yeah, as of now, we got four bad glow plugs. So the reason I just went ahead and took out all four glow plugs is because we also want to do a compression test on this engine. That'll tell us a lot. Ideally, you'd want to do a compression test on an engine that is warm, but it, it depends on kind of what, what, um, what, what problem we're trying to diagnose, you know, whether it's, it's smoking or hard to start when it's... Anyways, we got a cold engine that won't start, so I want to see what the compression is with a cold engine. Now, what we're using is the Harbor Freight. Um, so it's easy to get. This is Harbor Freight, the Maddox Master Diesel uh, Compression Test Kit. Um, the reason I like this kit is because it actually comes with an eight millimeter adapter. Okay, so you don't have to have any special tools. You can go to Harbor Freight and get this. Now, a lot of the diesel compression test kits that you see on Amazon or everything, they don't have the eight millimeter. However, I will leave a link to a kit and the adapter you can get right off Amazon, shipped to your door next day, two day, wherever you live, um, so that you can have this eight millimeter adapter because we're gonna screw this adapter right into the glow plug hole. And that's how we're going to check our compression. So the Harbor Freight Kit actually comes with that. And it actually works really good. So um, let's go out there and go ahead and do a compression test on all four cylinders. And we're going to average it out. We're going to do, I'm going to do like three or four tests per cylinder. Pump it up, uh, bleed it off, pump it up, bleed it off. Pump, and, and we're going to do an average over four different tests across all four uh, cylinders and see what we kind of come up with that average number. We want to be between four and 500 PSI. Ideally, that would be great. However, Bobcat has an allowable limit of 290 PSI. So if you're at that low 300, or especially if you're under 300 PSI after doing an average over five or six attempts, especially on a warm engine, you got other problems we need to look into. Washed out cylinder wall, broken rings, um, just worn out engine, some, you know, it, it could be anything, but ideally we want to be over 400 PSI. But if you're, you know, you know, for over 350 to 400, you're, you should still be good. So I'm going to screw in this little eight millimeter adapter and I'm going to start on cylinder number one and, uh, start working on my test here. Another reason I pull out all four glow plugs 
is because we're going to turn this engine over. We want it to turn over as fast as possible. We want to get build as much RPM as we possibly can. So when we take out all four glow plugs, that reduces the amount of compression in the engine and lets it turn over easier and faster using the starter. Speaking of using the starter, I don't want to um, turn the key on and try to turn this engine over with the uh, ignition because we're firing the injectors and we're dumping fuel into those um, cylinders while we're trying to do our tests. So uh, what I've got is a bump start switch is what we call this. And uh, I just hook it to my signal wire on the starter and the positive post on the starter. So that way we can just jump the starter out using this little switch. We just push this button. And that way we can turn the engine over. So now that I've got the adapter in number one, this kit comes with a little extension hose, which is cool. Plug that onto my adapter. And our gauge, and let's see what kind of PSI we can build. So I reached about 420 PSI on that engine. So I'm going to release the pressure. Well, I say 425 PSI on the engine on cylinder number one. And I'm gonna do this test several times on each cylinder and, and see what we come up with. Yeah, 400 PSI is on that cylinder. So I feel confident with uh, cylinder number one. I'm gonna go ahead and do all four cylinders. So I'm done compression testing all four cylinders and got the machine put together. My lowest cylinder was number three and I still came in at 380 PSI on that cylinder. So that tells me that all four cylinder compression test is good. We don't have a dusted engine, cracked rings, scarred cylinder wall, nothing like that. The health of the engine is good. I think we just, um, it's just so cold, it's just difficult to start when it gets below 20 degrees. So in order to help that situation, since our glow plugs are on back order right now, I can't just go buy glow plugs and put them in there, I, I, I'm gonna wait. So to get me by, I'm gonna install a block heater in this engine. And the uh, the Doosan engine, it's a, what we call a dry port or a socket style uh, block heater. And we just got a little cord here that plugs into it. Um, and what that means is, is most block heaters, we're kind of used to them going into like the water jacket, right? And heat the coolant in the engine to warm up the engine. Well, being that this is a dry socket, we literally just plug this down into a hole in the block. It doesn't go into any oil chamber or water, water jacket or anything. It just, it's just a dry socket in the engine that accepts this heater. So kind of looking behind the alternator down here on the back of the engine, and this is gonna, gonna be the same on the D24 and the D34 engine. Uh, if you don't already have a block heater installed, we're gonna have a little cap here. Pop this cap out of the engine. Oh, right here, and then we can see down in our hole there. Now, what I can see is the hole is extremely rusted on this engine. So I'm not gonna try to slide that uh, block heater in until I clean that hole out. Because what's gonna happen is it's such a tight fit, such tight tolerances. If I try to hammer it in, I'll, it, it'll get stuck halfway and it, it just won't go all the way in. So it's real important that we try to clean that hole out best we can before we try to install the block heater. All right, well, so that's been plugged in for about an hour and a half. I think that the engine is now warm enough to, uh, to start up. Let's see what she'll do. I guess I don't need to wait and start because we know that the, uh, the cloak plugs don't work. Yeah, so see, it starts really easy when the engine's warm or we use a, a block heater. I mean, it's warmed up a little bit today. It's kind of been in the sunshine, but our glow plugs were the issue with the cold start. And it usually is. I've had this 
problem here for about a month and a half now. Um, but now that we got the block heater in, and it took me a little while to get that block heater in because of that rust and scale. So I recommend if you get a new machine and you think that you might need a block heater someday, go ahead and buy one and get it installed because that hole does tend to rust up and it makes it that much more difficult to get that block heater installed. So, so I think that's all we need to do with this machine. We're gonna go ahead and get those glow plugs on order and maybe we'll see them by the time it gets warm enough that we don't even need them anymore. It probably will be early or late spring, early summer before I see them, but who knows? We're gonna put them on order. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please send me an email and I'll do my best to help you out.